Welcome, dear viewer, to Forbidden Worlds. Spooky stories remastered for the new digital age. Don't be afraid. After all, they are only stories. <laughs> Demon of Destruction. Here it is, reader. The most amazing story of the age. The hitherto unpublished account of how a dread demon of destruction stalked the earth on his mad, murderous rampage. Bar the doors and turn the lights low, for he may be coming your way. In the laboratory of Don Brady, young atomic physicist, we find Don, frustrated, leaning on his work table. Blast it! My calculations came out wrong again! I, I'm working myself into a nervous breakdown, trying to hit on the single formula that will enable me to perfect my atomic engine. But it always eludes me. Just then, his fiancée, Mary, walks into the lab. Don, darling, telegram. Thanks, Mary. Hmm, it's from my granduncle's executor. You know, the mad character who died last month after a lifetime of delving into the supernatural. The wire says he's left me his house. Mystic Manor. Oh, that ancient lonely house you told me about. I think it's the perfect spot for you to take a rest in, Don, to get away from your lab for a while. Ridiculous! What sane man would want to stay in that spooky, broken-down pile of bricks? But you're working yourself to death on that invention of yours! You need a change, a rest! And after you come back from your vacation at Mystic Manor, you'll be able to attack your work with redoubled vigour! Oh, my dearest, you're right as usual. I'll head up there and try to forget my atomic engine. But you've got to come along and help look after me. Oh, sweetheart. The very next day, Don and Mary arrive in Jonesville. This is Jonesville, nearest town to Mystic Manor. I think I'll stop off here and hire some servants, you know, to open up the place for us. That ought to be easy. The papers say this part of the state has been badly hit by unemployment. The townspeople will probably be fighting each other for a chance at a job. But in the local employment office... Mystic Manor? Mister, I wouldn't dare send anyone out to that devil-ridden place. You must be crazy. But if you won't help me, I'll find someone who will. If I have to go to every house in town. They find a local nearby. I'd starve before I work in that house of demons. Satan himself is master there. Has the whole town gone mad? Come on, Mary. Let's look up the local doctor. Maybe a man of science will tell us what this supernatural poppycock is all about. But in the town doctor's office... A stick manner. Well, sir, as a physician, I hate to admit it, but the townspeople have good reason to be terrified of that place. An aura of fiendish evil hovers over the house, almost like some presence from out of the vast unknown. A grisly something in the air that works its evil way into your very soul and fills you with ancient, clammy dread. That's ridiculous, Doctor. How can you believe such superstitious nonsense? I'll tell you. And then maybe you'll believe. Your granduncle's housekeeper was brought to my office some time ago. She was delirious, screaming incoherently about something she called Marzo. I went to Mystic Manor myself to find out what had frightened her, but I didn't stay there long. I couldn't. Something horribly evil seemed to reach into the depths of my being the moment I neared that accursed home. Something cold and malignant. Something that wanted my soul. Are you trying to tell me that my uncle's ghost is haunting that house? No, it all started before he died, when a huge coffin-like carton arrived from somewhere in the Orient. Your uncle began dying by inches soon after that. 
Each time I saw him, his eyes were more haunted. When he finally died, I issued a death certificate for heart failure. But I never dared ask myself what stopped his heart, for if ever I saw stark terror on a dead man's face, it was on his. Be warned, stay away from Mystic Manor. Uh, I'm beginning to be sorry I ever suggested coming here, Don. Let's go back, please. So this mass hysteria is beginning to affect you too, eh? Well, it's not going to get me down. I'm going to take you to Mystic Manor and prove that there's no such thing as the supernatural. Up the lonely winding mountain road, up to where the clammy mists hang low and a strange aura of some unknown menace hovers over the forbidding gables of a house crumbling with the weight of the ages. That, that creepy old place must be Mystic Manor, Don. And look, it, it seems as if a gigantic phantom hand is clutching the house. Strange. I seem to see it too. But it's probably just the fingers of mist curling around the house. There's nothing to be afraid of. Then, past the creaking door and into the musty interior, where flickering shadows writhe on furniture shrouded like white, crouching corpses. Don! I'm, I'm afraid! Terrified! Don't be silly, darling. This candelabra I found ought to give us enough light to explore the old joint, and you'll see how childish your fears are. This must have been your uncle's room, his death chamber, and it, it looks as if some demoniacal power has been let loose in here to ravage and destroy. Ah, oh, nonsense. Uncle Phineas always was untidy. Hmm, here's an ancient looking book, probably part of his studies into that occult poppycock. Let's see what it says, it ought to give us a laugh. And they read the page at which the book seems naturally to fall open. And so it came to pass that Marzo, the eternal incarnation of the spirit of destruction, the devil's disciple who is far more evil even than Satan, was finally conquered eons ago. Yea, Marzo, the most dreaded power on earth, was imprisoned in an ancient stone coffin, which was then hidden on the peak of Tachat Gengri in Tibet and cursed forever. Ha! What bosh! Listen, it gets even funnier. If his coffin is removed from that place, his evil aura will seep out and strike dead into the hearts of men. But if ever his coffin is opened and he escapes, then terror and destruction will stalk forever amid the flames and ruins of a ravaged world. Don, it isn't Bosch. That huge coffin-like carton which came to your uncle from the Orient must have been Marzo's coffin, because the aura of evil and dread around this house arrived together with that carton. Marzo is somewhere in this house. I, I can almost feel his clammy spirit groping for my soul. The only way to restore your sanity, Mary, is to turn this house upside down until you're convinced the mythical Marzo isn't here. Or anywhere. Come on! But finally, in the dim recesses of the subterranean cellar... The atmosphere of hovering evil seems to be more intense down here, as, as if we're getting warm. Oh look, that heavy iron door, it's bolted on this side as if to keep something in there from getting out. Well, that just makes it easy to open and don't try to stop me. As the unbolted door is flung open, an overwhelming aura of almost tangible, demoniacal evil surges out like a staggering blast from the depths. Matzo's coffin, he's in there. Oh yeah, I'll show you there's nothing supernatural in that box. I'll break it open and prove it. No, Don, don't! There, that did it. Now to see what's inside. Now let's see, I'll need a crowbar or lever of some kind to get that heavy lid open. You, you won't need it, Don. It, it's opening by itself. Don, that, that hand under the lid. Great Scott, someone is in there, but who? Or what? Ah! Stand back, whatever you are! Fear not. Although I am Marzo, the spirit of destruction, 
sworn to kill and destroy, I shall spare you. Because you have delivered me from my age-old captivity and freed me to stalk and ravage the earth once more. As a reward to you who shattered my prison, I will confer upon you the priceless gift of three wishes. No matter what three wishes you make, they shall be granted. And no power in the universe, not even I myself, will be able to deny them to you. But now, after all these centuries, I'm ready to go forth once more, to destroy! Don revives. Oh my, my head! The whole house collapsed around our ears! But we were miraculously spared somehow. Mary's beginning to stir. I've got to get her out of here. I don't know how it happened, darling. I guess the place was so old and unsafe that it was ready to collapse the moment anyone stepped foot in it. I must have been really knocked out cold, though, because I seem to remember some awful dream about how I unwittingly released a dread spirit named Marzo, who said he would grant me three wishes. Crazy dream for a scientist, eh? But that's eh? what I thought I dreamed. And if we'd both experienced it... It must have been reality. We've got to get a grip on ourselves, Mary. It couldn't have really happened. The mass hypnosis that gripped the people of Smithville, or was it Jonesville, must have started working on us too. Smithville is in flames, and Marzo said he was going to wreak destruction on the world. Let's get out of here and head for home, Mary. We're both overwrought. That fire is just a coincidence, and nothing more. Coincidence? Well, in the days that follow... No! No! Help! This is the 29th ghastly murder like this in these parts, but we can't seem to land the killer. He slips through the heaviest police curtain, almost as if he's a spirit. And the trail of murder seems to be heading towards New York. We'd better warn the police there to expect him. Or it. But the police of New York have not been warned to expect a spirit of destruction that can become invisible, monstrous, that can stalk through a city and leave a tragic trail of death and horror behind. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Don Brady's lab... You have just witnessed the most horrifying and unbelievable sight in history, ladies and gentlemen of the television audience. A massive bridge of steel and concrete ripped apart by some invisible force, pinioning hundreds of people in the wreckage. Don, that, that must be Marzo's terrible work. Now, while the screams of the dying fill the air, the havoc and destruction seem to have temporarily halted. But who knows when or where this unknown force will strike again. I... I can't believe it. This is the 20th century. Things like this just can't happen. But they just did happen. You! Yes, I. The spirit of destruction who will go on and on. Burning, killing, destroying. What I've done so far is nothing compared to what I'm about to do. But I came to reassure you that no matter what destruction I wreak, you will both be spared. And you who released me from my coffin will be all powerful, because the three wishes I granted you will enable you to accomplish anything your heart desires. Anything. And now, farewell. He, he vanished. He was real. All this isn't a dream. And if Marzo has such power, maybe the three wishes I make will come true? Yes, your three wishes. The reward you received for betraying humanity. Is that all you can think about at a time like this, when Marzo is about to destroy the whole world? That's all I want to think about. I can use my first wish to obtain the secret of the atomic engine that's been eluding me for so long. That will give me power. Another wish will make me the richest man in history. You, you murderer! All you care about is riches and power! When you're the one who freed that murderous spectre from out of the unknown to prey upon a helpless world! You're responsible! You're as much as a killer as Marzo! Yes, 
You're furious at me, blind with rage, because deep in your heart, you know I'm right and you're guilty. But you can't admit it to yourself. Get away from me. I'm going to be the most powerful man in the world. Why should I let you and your childish raving stand in my way? I wish you were dead. Instantly. Oh! She, she's dead. And my wish killed her. But, but I just blurted out those words without meaning them. I never wanted her to die. She's all I ever loved, and now I've lost her. Because I unwittingly used the terrible power that Marzo conferred on me. She's gone. Forever. Wait. Not forever. I've still got two more wishes. I can use one of them to... I wish that Mary revives, comes back from the dead into life, exactly as she was. Don, what... what happened? The last thing I knew... Never mind, darling, you're back with me and that's all that matters. You, you, you just fainted. You'll feel better as soon as you get some fresh air at the window. At that moment, the sound of destruction. <laughs> there, there. There goes the Empire State Building. Great Scott! New York, it's being utterly destroyed. This is what Marzo meant when he said that what he'd done so far was nothing compared to what he was going to do. He's... He's going on a rampage of destruction such as the world never even dreamed of. And only you can stop him, Don. You've got the three wishes he awarded you. Wishes he said not even he himself could deny. You can use one of those wishes to destroy him. You've got to do it. No. Not three wishes anymore. Just one. Just one wish left. And with it, I can ask for the secret I need to perfect my atomic engine. The secret I've hungered for. The one that will make me the richest and most powerful man in the world. I... I can see I was wrong in asking you to stop, Marzo. Your greed is greater than your concern for humanity. Go ahead, then. Use your last wish for whatever you want. Gain your wealth and power, but lose me, because I... I'm going out there to die with all the others. No, Mary, wait. I... I remember what it meant to have lost you once. I couldn't go on living without you, without your love. You, you've made me realize what's really important in life. Not wealth or power, but love and humanity. I'll use my last wish to stop Marzo. Oh, Don. Turn back time to before I released Marzo from his stone coffin in mystic manner. Let him still be a prisoner so that all the death and destruction he caused will be undone as if it had never happened. Instantly. He, he vanished. You did it, Don. Yes, and the city's intact and all the people are all right. Everything is just the way it was. As if Marzo never actually went on his rampage. And since the destruction he caused was all undone, as if it had never even happened, the memory of it will be wiped out of people's minds. No one will remember Marzo except... Yes, he's securely imprisoned in his stone coffin again, back in Mystic Manor, and we'll make sure that he stays there. Right, darling. I don't really care about those wasted three wishes now, as long as I have you. So, dear viewer, what did you think about our first strange story of the supernatural? We'd love to read and respond to your comments below. Let us know. What's your take on these stories from a different era? But don't forget that you can download this retro comic book from the 1950s via our friends at archive.org. Scroll down for all the spooky specifics. Well, there you have it, dear viewer. Our tales are done. For now. If you enjoyed this edition of Forbidden Worlds, a like would be appreciated. Leave a comment to let us know which story you enjoyed or hated the most. But if you are a glutton for punishment, here are some other tantalizing tales to give you goosebumps. Curious? 
Give one a creepy click. And be sure to subscribe so we can tell you when we have added more spine-tingling stories of the supernatural to our Forbidden Worlds channel.